I was asked something recently that got me thinking about fragmentation in Linux. I mean, they actually asked me about fragmentation in Linux, but most of the time I discuss this subject with someone, it usually starts with them making a claim that Linux has too many options and there should be only one Linux OS. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad take or anything. I understand why people feel this way. But the recent discussion I had started a bit different. They actually asked me whether I thought the fragmentation in Linux was a good thing or a bad thing. The answer I gave is basically both. There are pros and cons to fragmentation we have in the platform. And after I thought about it for a while, I realized this would make an interesting video. So here we go. In my opinion, the fragmentation of Linux is both its superpower and its kryptonite. It gives a ton of choices so the user can find something that works perfectly for their needs. But it gives a ton of choices, so there's a lot of options and variables to consider to find that perfect option. It drives innovation and creativity, but it also kind of drives duplication of effort because a lot of people are doing the same stuff. It means that all of the different distros are different enough, so attacking the entire platform is incredibly hard due to the amount of distros that there are available. But due to the amount of distros that are available, some companies see this as a ton of work to support the platform because they see it, they have to support all these different distributions with their applications, so they don't. The fragmentation of Linux sounds like a problem at first, and admittedly it kind of is one, but it's also what gives Linux its superpowers. Linux is compatible with a vast range of hardware from the tiny little modules like Raspberry Pis, uh, the massive supercomputers, even the International Space Station and the Ingenuity Research Copter on Mars all run Linux. If there was only one distro, then that wouldn't be possible. Also, the innovation that happens in Linux is so fast and happens so much because there are no restrictions on anyone from building anything, pretty much. If there was only one distribution, then we wouldn't really have all that innovation and potential. If you're new to Linux, then I get it. It's kind of confusing to figure out where to start. The sheer number of options can cause decision paralysis, and the inconsistent behavior between distros can make Linux feel a bit unpredictable. At the same time, this encourages innovation by allowing projects to diverge and experiment. That's how we have beginner-friendly distros like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and Zorin OS, as well as many others. While at the same time, we have distros that can focus on a single use case, like gamer-ready distros such as Nobara, Bazite, Garuda, Cache OS, and more. Then there's ultra-specific use cases like Tails and Hunix for those who care about privacy above all else. Then there's the hardcore options for those who want to put together their own system piece by piece like Arch Linux, Gentoo, and Slackware. The amount of choices is overwhelming. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's why I made a video about how to narrow down your choice for what should be your first distro. You'll find a link in the cards and in the video description for that particular video. One commonly stated issue is that it stretches resources too much resulting in worse outcomes. You will absolutely see this happening in a company. That happens all the time in the business world. However, Linux doesn't work like a company. Most of the resources in Linux are because there aren't restrictions and anyone can jump in and build whatever they want. By not having a barrier to get involved, more people can get involved, whereas if it was all controlled by a single project or company, that automatically introduces gatekeeping. On my show, This Week in Linux, I've covered so many different distros over the years. And sometimes those distros are made by very young people. And I mean kids. I can list off a few distros that have been around for a while and that were started by teenagers and even some by 11 and 12 year olds. In fact, there's one that was started by a nine year old and he's been killing it for years. There's no chance that a 12, 11, or nine year old kid is going to get the opportunity to work on a distro if there was only one of them. This applies to a lot of projects in the community. The amount of projects started by people who are teenagers or younger is actually kind of high, surprisingly. As it turns out, I started in Linux when I was 13 and I've contributed to a lot of projects over the years. And I know many projects that were created by people who are now adults, but they launched them when they were kids. If there was one distro that had gatekeeping to optimize resources or whatever, then none of these kids would ever have the opportunity to get involved. I mean, maybe if they waited for years and somehow their passion to be involved continued without anything fueling it, then maybe. But because it works like it does, these kids can just start their own projects or jump into whatever they want, and all they have to do is try. So yeah, one distro would make it really easy to get started as a user, but there would be some downsides too. Linux gaming is another good example why the fragmentation is a good thing. 
Let's imagine that Linux was a single distro, but whoever controlled it didn't play video games and therefore didn't care if games worked or not. Or let's say it was controlled by an organization or a company and gaming wasn't important to their bottom line. We wouldn't have such a great gaming scene that we do now. Actually go back 15 years ago and that's basically what the platform was like. There were a few games. Eh, if we were lucky, there was about a dozen. But that's not ideal for anyone who considers themselves a gamer, right? Thanks to the fragmentation where someone can see a need and work on it, Valve decided that they were going to take on Linux gaming. So they brought Steam to the platform in 2013. The gaming community in Linux grew very quickly and we had like a thousand games available to us. Then you fast forward to 2018 and Valve decided to start the work on Proton with the Wine Devs and the Code Weavers team. And with their powers combined, Proton has been available for many years and has made it possible for us to have over 20,000 games right now that we can play. I mean, Mac with all the all of Apple's trillions of dollars is pretty miserable for playing games. And Microsoft, with their trillions, accepted that their own Windows OS is worse in some cases than Linux, so that's why they power 65% of their Azure service with Linux. Just because a company has resources and only has one operating system doesn't mean they will actually create a product that does what you want it to. Unless you want Windows Recall, and like how these companies arbitrarily make your perfectly fine hardware not be supported just because they can? I mean, if you like that, then sure. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. If the fragmentation of Linux is so great, then why is it missing insert important app that someone wants? This is fair. Sometimes I'm kind of bummed when I find out a cool app that I heard about doesn't support Linux. There's no way around that. That's a bummer. If you need a particular app for your work or to support your hardware or whatever other reason, I get it. It's kind of a bummer not to have those. And it took a while to solve this problem. I advocated for a universal app format for a very long time. But now we have that. I remember back in 2014, I was at a conference talking to someone from the GNOME team who was super excited about a new project being made called XDG Apps, a universal app format that would work on every distro as long as they wanted it to. I talked about this with him for well over an hour at their booth because this was exactly what I was wanting for years. I also remember specifically requesting that they not call it that because, well, XDG Apps is a mouthful. And thankfully, the name was reconsidered and they re renamed it later to Flatpaks. The universal app format issue was solved. And in fact, we now have three options, Flatpaks, App Images, and Snaps. All three of these have their pros and cons, but the way I look at it, is that since they all work alongside each other and they don't have conflicts, so you can use them regardless of which one, and the user can get whatever app they want as long as the developer makes it work with one of these, I don't really care which one the devs pick. Though personally, I do prefer flat packs, but whatever the dev picks is fine with me as long as I can use it on my Linux platform. Quick side note, to some people out there, snaps predate flat packs by a bit, just so you know. Now, if you don't know why I'm saying that, good, doesn't matter. But for those that do, well, you know now. So now we can talk to companies and developers and tell them that they don't have to support each Linux distro separately. They can just use one of the universal app formats and be done. So awesome. This means that Linux can support a much larger range of applications as long as the developers bother to make it work. If there's an app that you want that doesn't support Linux, maybe contact the company behind it or the developers behind it and ask them to consider a universal format so they can instantly increase their user base with a massive audience that not only wants more applications, we're hungry for companies to actually give us attention to our platform. That's the thing. If a company came to Linux platform and brought their application with it, especially if it's one that's sought after, then they're gonna get so much goodwill from the community because a lot of companies are not bothering to do that. If you can convince any company Maybe send them this video because this is actually something that they would benefit a ton from because you're comp basically competing in a smaller pool with people who are so hungry to get more applications. So don't waste the opportunity, I say. So that's my opinion about the fragmentation in Linux. Yes, one option would be really easy to get started with, but we wouldn't get a lot of other things that having this fragmentation offers the platform, the innovation, the creativity, the experiments, the, the new methods and mechanisms to do all sorts of stuff. And I, I, there's a pro and con here, right? On one side, 
it's a little confusing to get started. And also it's confusing for a while in some cases. And on the other side, there's so much cool stuff and anyone can get involved at any time on practically anything they want to. And there's just, I don't know, it's just, I, I guess there's really no great way to look at it. There's fragmentation is the superpower and the kryptonite. 